Thank you. Thank you so much for all for being here. Uh, it's my pleasure to talk to you today and I'm really looking for all of your comments and feedback uh, you may have. So, and thank you especially to Priscilla Clays who invited me here and to Leila, to Rosie and to Ben who take care of the organization of this seminar. So I'm going to present a research which started during my studies and my PhD and continue now as a postdoc. And so it will involve work with Gaetan van Lokeren, who was at that time the advisor of Olivier Descuter at the previous UN Special Rapporteur on the right to food. And then Pierre Stassard from University of Liège in Belgium as well. And Philippe Barret from University of Louvain who was my PhD supervisor. And then so after my PhD, I went to Berkeley to work with uh, Miguel Altieri and now with Alistair Hills. Um, so um, my work was based on two observations. The first one on one hand, like as you all know here, the world has been facing a significant socioeconomic and environmental crisis, especially since 2008. And in this context, the question of whether a green job could be a trail to increase the number of jobs and the quality of jobs is a great concern for Western government. And in agriculture, I found that some scientists and associations, social movement as well, and politicians, defend that organic and or agroecological agriculture could improve working conditions compared to conventional agriculture. However, when I started my literature review, um, I found the literature very poor on the subject and also divided. As for the northern context of vegetable production, which has been my focus of interest, the literature has been really divided. On one hand, we first normative approaches, in which authors consider that by principles, agroecological systems offer better working conditions than conventional or even organic agriculture, because agroecology involves more diversified system, does not use harmful input and involve an inspiring and intellectually challenging world. But there were very few empirical research studies that had tested these assumptions. Secondly, I found that the few existing empirical studies focus on the producer situation in alternative agriculture or on the situation of seasonal immigrants, farm workers in industrial agriculture, such as in strawberries in Andalusia in Spain. So we don't know much about producer situations in conventional agriculture, and we don't know much about farm workers in alternative agriculture. And in addition, the scarce studies on labor in alternative agriculture denounce the use of volunteers and bad paid workers on behalf of producers participating to a more ecological agriculture and based on reciprocity rather than market economy. Third point, it's there is now a growing literature which evaluates its performance of alternative agriculture on experimental farms. So these farms are very interesting to evaluate innovative techniques and facilitate the collection of data, how to get to farmers, but they are embedded in a very specific context um, as they benefit from a scientific monitoring, from financial resource through training they often offer and enjoy high notoriety given the, giving them an easier access to market, to social network, to knowledge. And so these experimental farms lead to results hard to reproduce in a more classical embedded context, especially when it comes to socioeconomic data. So that was the first observation when I went to my when I started my literature review. And the second observation, which was initially made by Gaetan van Lokeren, which has strongly impacted my research, is the following one. The definition of agroecology is object of debate, especially regarding the inclusion of socioeconomic dimension. So as you all know here, the founders of agroecology have always situated uh, the movement as part of a political criticism of the productivist system. However, they originally defined agroecology with a more restrictive approach based on ecological principles. And nowadays, these ecological principles defined by Miguel Altieri in 1995 are one of the most commonly used definition of agroecology. And so consequently, researchers often leave aside the political and socioeconomic dimensions of agroecology, which have not yet been translated into principles. So, in the context, I found important to first clarify what are the socioeconomic dimensions of agroecology and translate these dimensions into principles to avoid neglecting fundamental aspects of agroecology. And secondly, I wanted to test this normative 
ideal of agro of socio-economic ideal of agroecology to empirical research and more specifically to evaluate the working conditions of producer and of their farm worker in farms trying to implement the socio-economic principles of agroecology. So let's start from the building of the socio-economic principles of agroecology and move later to empirical results. So to express agroecological socio-economic principle, I first identified a list of fundamental topics um, and for that I review, of course, the historical, popular and scientific agroecological literature, but I also refer to different movements that uh, Gaetan van Locker and Pierre Stassar and I found close to the agroecological movement, so like the fair trade movement, alternative other agricultural model to conventional agriculture, the cooperative model um, movement and the social and solidarity movement. And so I identified like that 13 topics and as you can see in subscribed, um, I credited for each of them the literature in which I formed them and then I attempted to define this topic uh, in line with the agroecological literature. So I won't develop each of these topics here. Uh, if you would like to delve into this topic, I invite you to have a look to our publication on that. I did a second literature review last year um, of the agroecological literature, and I'm currently writing a paper on that with Miguel Altieri. So I would prefer to present you this updated world and have your feedback on this. So um, I end up with uh, seven socioeconomic principles, so, but I'm still working on that, so feel free to comment it later. So the first one is um, agroecology has to offer good living and working conditions for agroecological practitioners of the defined system. So it could be a farm system, a food system, um, including through the use of the profits obtained from economic activity to remunerate worker and reach social objectives rather than to maximize the return on the capital invested. Um, Agroecology also will ask to participate in the development of social embeddedness of food systems through farmer, consumer, extension and scientific networks that support organic and inorganic input exchange, seed, machinery, knowledge and the development of fair pri prices through partnerships between producers and consumers <coughs> involving the awareness of consumer to producers' reality and vice versa. Agroecology has to contribute in the development of local food systems by promoting local employment and local technologies, by minimizing distances between production, transformation and commercialization steps, and by promoting physical, intellectual and economic access to local markets. So physical access refers, for instance, to the roads needed for, to reach a market, intellectual access could refer to the information that a producer, for instance, uh, would need to get access to markets. And economic access refers, for instance, to the price that a producer would sometimes have to pay to have access to a market. So um, agroecology then also has to create collective knowledge by recognizing the value of traditional empirical scientific knowledge and know-how and by facilitating their exchanges between actors applying agroecology, including between peers and between generations. Um, and a fifth principle, agroecology, which has to take decisions based on democratic models, implying balanced power relations between systems actor, horizontal exchange, transparent relationships, non-racial, sexual, gender, religious and cultural discrimination, and no decision based on member assets. And then two last principle, um, so agroecology also has to ensure no financial support and autonomy in terms of viability and decision making from markets, economic actors like clients, agri-food businesses and policies like subsidies, upstream and downstream of the system and more particularly from actors external to the agroecological approach. And last principles, agroecology has to commit to political actions promoting agroecological principles and the conditions of their applications. So maybe something that I forgot to say is that like um, to write these principles, the literature uh, from the social movement were very important because <coughs> actually they worked a lot on this socioeconomic dimension of agroecology more than scientists. And notice that um, I suggested to call this principle socio-economic and not political and I did this choice to differentiate the principles mobilized that we would mobilize to design an agroecological system from the political strategy, especially the food sovereignty, that a government, for instance, must imply to help 
the actor who would like to implement the agroecological principles to reach their goal. So, um, and the last principles, which has to commit to political action, ties the socio-economic principles with the political strategy, um, consider, yeah, especially food sovereignty, which is considered as the way to allow peace, peace and to put agroecology into practices. Um, so now let's move to uh, the empirical study that will allow us to confront this theoretical principles with the realities of both producers and the farm workers, especially regarding their working conditions. So I'll present you a study here I did during my PhD, focusing on the agri-food system of fresh vegetables in Wallonia, in Belgium. So the Wallon region is relatively a small region, spatially, politically, and quite, oh, um, okay. I actually, I'll start first with that and come back a bit that it will be clearer, sorry about that. So to design the um, empirical research, I found important to combine a pragmatic and comparative and a systemic approach. So pragmatic, as I, given the literature, I wanted to understand what are the ideal of actor and how this ideal guides their practices, especially when they are confronted um, by obstacles and dilemma regarding the implementation of their ideal. So I wanted to understand why there probably exists a gap between the ideal pursued by agroecological actors and their actual practices as the literature denounced sometimes harmful situation in alternative systems. I also wanted to compare situation to avoid any misconception on what is agroecology. So I study agroecological uh, situation alongside organic and conventional situation to highlight agroecological specificities. And then a systemic approach as the aim was to identify all food systems elements influencing working conditions, so including also pressure from the socioeconomic context and markets, rather than focusing on just a few elements of working conditions. Um, and so now you will understand better why I focus on the Wallon region. Um, so the Wallon region is a relatively small region, spatially, politically and socioeconomically quite homogeneous, which made easier the comparison between agroecological, organic and conventional systems. And so this region includes about 300 vegetable growers, which is not so much. Um, but this was actually an interesting feature because the Walloon region has traditionally specialized in cereal and cattle farms. And so most of the vegetable farms are actually very diversified on small area. And as we will see, are pursuing the agroecological principles. So my comparative approach involves to include the diverse production system existing in the region in the study. And so I identified four main uh, technical orientation. And yeah, um, from, so from market gardeners on small area to the vegetables, to the um, vegetable growers in field crops. So I will refer to them as market gardening on small area, market gardening on medium areas, market gardening on large areas, vegetable growing in field crops, and hope <coughs> you won't be too lost <laughs> when I will pass from a system to another. So basically, um, they, this whole system exists in both organic and conventional agriculture, and mechanization and areas are increasing from market gardening on small area to vegetable growing in field crops. Full-time equivalent per hectare of vegetable are important on small and medium area, um, more than on the larger area, even if they vary with the type of production, organic or conventional, and also with the type of commercialization and other factors such as the choice of cultiv cultivating vegetables during winter. So in, in addition to technical features of um, each of these production systems, they also present typical marketing route and sociocultural features. Uh, so for instance, in organic market gardening on small area and market gardening on medium area, which will interest us more um, for the rest of this presentation, producers are usually younger, not coming from an agricultural family, and they, have with they had little experience when they started their production system. Another important feature is that organic market gardening on small area is the only system where most producers um, sell their products through collective buying groups, known as GAC in French. So I focused on 41 farms out of the 300 
vegetable farm in Wallonia, and so most of the farms uh, three times to collect both qualitative data but also to make some technic technical economic appraisals. I also interviewed various food system actors, such as few farm workers, union members, local advisors, um, to cross data and information. So among these conventional and organic farms, I could consider organic market gardener on small area and on medium area as agroecological. So as no consensual definition of what is an agroecological system is available, I assign a producer a posteriori to the agroecological model when he or she respects the organic farming regulation, and this could be uh, through alternative farming regulation, such as a participatory guarantee system, and also when um, he or she has developed practices to implement the socioeconomic principles and make his or her decision with a social justice objective when he or she faces an ethical dilemma regarding the implementation of the principles. So ethical dilemmas are, in this context of the study, a situation where the producer have to choose, uh, has to choose between different options regarding the implementation of the principles. So these options are not compatible while they all defend values that the producer would like to pursue. So basically, the idea is that in a context where some principle may be hard to implement, given the literature, uh, the literature review I did, um, that was my assumption and that well, actually I will confirm it, I wanted to evaluate if the producers really try to implement the socioeconomic principles of agroecology or if they just have adopted a few practices that match with their personal interests. So I've developed these two conditions based on the French pragmatic uh, sociology of Boltonsky and Thévenot and on the work of Mathieu de Nanteuil who developed a model of evaluation of social justice at work called Ethics of Compromise. So this framework that I developed considered the principles of agroecology as one proposition of social justice uh, horizon, could be other, um, and evaluate through the study of the justification of practices of the producers to what extent the producers try to develop practices to respond to this ideal and this principle. So very concretely, following this framework, we consider that a decision um, is based on social justice objective when they are justified by a plurality of axiological research, re register, sorry, including the pursuit of the general interest, and are hard to reverse as they are materialized in investment, contractor, or strong partnerships. So we won't have the time to look at whether or not the diverse producers implement the different uh, principles, but we will see one example of ethical dilemmas and justification of producer regarding two principles. So notice that I could also reduce the ecological principles of agroecology to organic agriculture, given that all producers who that I could identify as following the socioeconomic principle of agroecology were working in highly diversified farm, relying on the recycling of nutrients rather than the use of input, which was really in line with these principles. But I did not make a systematic evaluation of the ecological principles as I did for the socioeconomic principles. So then I characterize working conditions of producer through the study of nine dimensions. So they concern, of course, dimensions such as income, but also some dimensions such as the leeway that producers have to adopt um, social and technical practices as they want, or other dimensions concern the risk of losing his or job, the time spent at work, the intrinsic benefits of work, work-related discomfort, occupational health, also the competence, which refer to the extent to which farmers consider to master and have access to the knowledge they need to perform uh, their job. And then the last I mentioned that I call political experience at work by referring to the work <coughs> of uh, Isabel Ferreras, so which evaluates the extent to which producers feel they are equal to other individuals met for work purposes, so authorities, customer, neighborhood, <coughs> inspector, and the extent to which producers feel able to express their point of view and collectively mobilize themselves in order to influence decisions that affect them. So for each of these dimensions, a series of qualitative and quantitative variables have been uh, evaluated through mainly comprehensive interviews and also through my technical economic appraisals. Um, 
for the farm workers, I studied more narrowly worker status, so it could be salaried employees, self-employed, undeclared volunteers, associates. And for the salaries, the contracts, so permanent, fixed term, seasonal contract, and other contracts specific to the Belgian context. And I also study the way producers uh, manage their worker, as well as the kind of task workers have to perform. So now let's move to uh, my results. So to understand the working conditions of producers and of their farm workers in agroecology, it's first necessary to understand the general context. So in market gardening on small and medium areas in the Walloon region, agroecological producers, but also conventional producers, find their job interesting and useful for society. Uh, in general, market gardening involves mastering a lot of knowledge and know-how and is intellectually challenging. So even after 30 years of, of practices actually. But all of them struggle to be profitable. Producers have to work at least 2,800 hours per year. So that is uh, 40, 54 sorry, hours per week through the year to generate a profit before tax of 24,000 per year. So that is 2,000 euro per month before tax, which is very low. And it is that the producer on larger scale generate better income, but they also um, take much more financial risk. And so I met several cases of bankruptcy. So, however, with this, within this same context, I observed that agroecological market gardener on medium areas experience one of the best working conditions compared to the other production systems, while the agroecological market gardener on small areas experience one of the most difficult situations compared to the other system. And I found close results for the farm workers. So how to explain these two very different agroecological realities? So first, the Walloon cohesion context does not support agroecological market gardening on small area. It is only since 2014 that the technical center advises agroecological and organic market gardener. Before it was only for conventional market gardener on very large area, actually. In addition, as that's a very well-known problematic, but land prices in the Walloon region are unaffordable for producers on small and medium area who generate a low turnover. And is even more problematic for the agroecological producers as most of them do not come from an agricultural family and so have to buy land. And when a producer does not own his or her land, he cannot make some investments. Then the investment subsidies are granted only for minimum amount of equipment, while most of the unit unitary equipment in agroecology on small area is not expensive enough to benefit from grants. So agroecological producer consequently lack of financial support to make the investment they wish. And finally, agroecological market garden on small area sell most of the product to collective buying group, known as GAC in French. But since few years, an increasing number of producers have started to also sell uh, vegetable boxes. And it's also retailers and internet platforms which are offering much more vegetable boxes, but with much more flexible conditions. So the consumer can now select the vegetable of its box, can have the box delivered at home, have no obligation to have a long-term commitment or to pay a subscription in advance, which was not the case at the beginning at the region of of, of GAC. So the increase of the vegetable su box supplies has been accompanied by a shift toward more classical conditions of market which are not in favor of agroecological farmers because the first idea was to help the farmer to, uh, to generate a cash flow and <coughs> to impose some conditions to the consumer that respects their own constraints as a producer who have to include a diversity and respect some agroecological principles. And to these contextual constraints are added other constraints. So the technical difficulty of managing crop rotation on small areas is much more complicated than when you have all the space that you want. Um, to commercial challenges as the producers selling vegetable box have to produce exactly what their consumer are ready to eat every week and have to find enough consumer on too far from their farm in order to be profitable to the lack of knowledge and experience of this producer compared to the experience of the producer from the other production system, given that most of the agroecological market gardeners are not from an agricultural families. 
And finally, the agroecological market gardener on small area suffer also from socioeconomic constraints. They can work only with volunteers or short-term employees, having little to no experience, um, because they are financially not unable to offer long-term contracts. And in addition, they struggle to benefit from uh, the work of contractors who prefer not to work on these small farms because of the expensive transa transaction costs for a few hectares. So all of these constraints have multiple consequences on working condition in market gardening on small area. So to meet the expectation of consumer, the, evolu the evolution of the vegetable box market, and the difficult access to study and skillful labor limit the freedom of producers to make the choices they wish. The lack of access to subsidies and to lands and the evolution of vegetable box market, which does not always allow producers to create cash flow as before, create conditions of work insecurity. And in addition, these agroecological producers, such as the other producers on small and medium areas, um, suffer from the low income they generate. But this is even more problematic for these agroecological producers as they do not come from an agricultural family and they often have much more expectation in terms of balance between their private and family lives. Basically, they want to work as we work and not as a classical conventional producer work, which is a huge amount of work per, per week. So to get over such a situation, I observe that these producers mainly try to reinforce their ties with consumers. So even if agroecological producers were often members of unions or associations that fight for an easier access to land, for instance, and even if they are usually members of networks um, and cooperative or production or com commercialization that aim as well to exchange knowledge, they mainly believe in the importance of their ties with consumers to change the situation in the near future. And this appears paradoxical with the flexibilization of the markets of vegetable box, showing that with time, consumers probably won't be willing to accept more and more constraints. So this is a bit, this was a surprise for me. And so why producers do not or less believe in exchange of knowledge to help to change the situation, or do not or less believe <coughs> in political action to less change the si their situation? So Regarding the knowledge exchange, this is probably because of the important barriers uh, that Tom Apongo pointed in a very interesting study, also in the Wallon region in the same context, and a study that he did mostly at the same time than mine. So Tom Apongo studied a cooperative catering agroecological uh, farmers, and, and part of these agroecological farmers were uh, in my sample of producers. And he observed that topics with normative context, so those involving ethical issues, were avoided. Questions like just prices or how to pay their farm workers and labor were circumvented to preserve the solidarity between the farmers and their ability to exchange on more technical uh, data. So, And then regarding the political action, how to explain that producer less believe in political action, this, but this is completely an assumption and it might be interesting to better understand that in the future. This might be related to the observation that other did, not, 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 uh, not me, that many farmers consider having very few time for political action. And even if most of them were involved in political action, their involvement were probably quite marginal. They consider that it takes too much time to debate and to find a solution. And so they mostly stay alone with their problem, trying to change the situation and trying to involve consumers. Uh, another assumption is related to this apolitical vision of transition, which are directly or indirectly related by many alternative movements. I don't know if you know movements such as Pierre Rabhi in France, or also uh, the the collapsologists uh, like uh, Pablo Serving. So they indirectly claim that transition won't happen thanks to politics and that we, because the transition are, is very urgent, um, we as citizens, as consumers, and as producers should do the transition and start it together. And so um, I did not delve into this question, but I suppose that these kind of messages uh, 
reached a producer who eventually did not believe in political action anymore. So as a result of all these constraints, some agroecological market gardeners on small areas have difficulties enjoying their day-to-day -day work. The gap between their ideal, including the expectations of having a, viable, a viable job, allowing them to influence society towards more sustainability, and their actual experience, including their feeling of not being supported enough, is too important and is a source of suffering. Congruently, I've observed that if the agroecological market gardener on small area uh, are largely predominant in Wallonia, and if their system has existed at least since the 80s, their producers are still much younger than in other production systems. So this means that there is probably an important turnover because this work is too tiring for them. So in this difficult context, and this is a very important point <coughs> until the end of the presentation, so if you are a bit lost, it's time to wake up. <laughs> um, some producers have decided to practice what is called purchase with sale operations. So they buy vegetables to a wholesaler in Terbio in Belgium at a low price, and they then sell these vegetables at their own price in their farm store or in their vegetable box. So the vegetables of the wholesaler in Terbio are not <coughs> produced in line with the agroecological principles and many times come from foreign countries. So even the origin of the vegetable is usually indicated. Consumers are not well aware, actually, of this practice. So this purchase with sale operation represents a real ethical dilemma for the producers. Most agroecological market gardeners, who are on small area, refuse to do purchase with sale operation or practice it at a very low level. They refuse this practice because they want to not finance unsustainable agriculture and to teach consumers to pay the right price for unsustainable agriculture for sustainable agriculture. Sorry. So purchase with sale operations for them it's an unfair competition to producers who try to teach consumers the hard agroecological market gardener job. But some agroecological market gardeners who are usually on medium area defend purchase with sale operation. For what? to offer good working and employment conditions and to offer healthy food at reasonable price. And I won't unfortunately have the time to develop, uh, to develop this, but indeed this <coughs> agroecological market gardener or medium area completely stand out from the other system production, whatever the model agroecological, organic or conventional, by offering much better employment conditions um, to the labor, including a high level of permanent contract, they offer diversified type of work between production and commercialization, um, give training to the farm workers, and, and in addition, they, these producers themselves benefit from better working conditions. So, the study of this dilemma shows that producers have to prioritize some principle at the expense of other. While the first <laughs> group of, produ of agroecological producers, generally market gardeners on small area, prioritizes no financial support and autonomy from non-agroecological systems, the second group of producers, market gardeners medium area, prioritize um, the, to the employment, the, the quality of employment and working conditions. So, as you can see also, all producers justify their choice of doing or not purchase with sale operation by referring to the general interest. They do or not this practice, not only for themselves, but also to protect the agroecological community by <coughs> offering them better working and employment conditions or by not financing uh, unsustainable agriculture. So because of that, I could not consider a group of farmer as more or less agroecological, but I found that there are two agroecological systems prioritizing different principles and this uh, lead to different working and employment situation. So to overcome the constraint that agroecological market gardener on small area face, agroecological market gardener on medium area have not only adopted purchase with sale operations through my <coughs> comprehensive interviews, but also by comparing situation between the diverse production systems. Um, I identified the nine following practices as necessary, even not sufficient, to offer relatively good working and employment conditions to producers and their farm workers, given the current socioeconomic and political context. So a slightly larger area of vegetable, which makes, for instance, the management of the rotation easier, which gives the producer an easier access to external contractor and grant subsidies. A slightly higher level of mechanization, the cultivation of filter vegetable, which facilitated 
to offer work all around the years and so to offer permanent contract to the worker. The fact that they mostly sell their product on farm store, which were at that time at least um, more protected from competition than vegetable box market. And the importance of offering training to the farm worker. So these, fa these practices with the purchase we sell operation appear necessary to overcome the, the constraint that the market gardener or small area were facing. And um, in addition to these practices, with three additional practices that we can find also on agroecological market system on small area, appeared necessar necessary to offer good employment conditions to farm workers. So uh, the fact that the area project vegetable is always less than an hectare, and so the repetitiveness of work is uh, is minimized, uh, that there is at least 30 different vegetable and their organic agriculture appear necessary with these six practices to offer good employment conditions. Um, and these next practices form a coherent role. So for instance, it's the combination of a vegetable production higher than two hectares, um, the importance of winter vegetables, a, substan a substantial commercial activity, and the purchase with sales operation, which enable the market gardener on medium area to offer permanent contract and to a high proportion of their employees. So notice that uh, these practices do not imply that the, this market gardener medium area have a higher income. They still have the same income that I present at the beginning. And even if they have better working conditions, those market gardeners suffer from a much more important time at work. So it's also a compromise. So let's now move to the conclusion and some point of conclusion. So by Studying the justification of producers' practices, I could observe that agroecological socioeconomic principles, which ask for better working and employment conditions, are meaningful for many producers. Yet, in the current socioeconomic and political context, producers have to prioritize some principles at the expense of others, and this impacts working and employment conditions. And in this context, we cannot we can say we cannot say that agro Sorry, we can say that agroecology does not systematically offer better working and employment conditions to producers and the farm workers. It depends how they prioritize some principle and related practices at the expense of others. But we can also say that agroecology appears necessary to offer good employment conditions to farm workers, even if not sufficient. So agroecology appears as having a high potential to offer better working and employment conditions but unsurprisingly, unfortunately, needs much more support. This work allowed me to highlight initial path to improve the situation. So first, there is obviously a list of constraints that must be raised. Um, there is a lack of investment subsidies adopted to agroecological farms, a lack of access to land for new entrants in agriculture, especially, a lack of strong union movement for farm worker, and a price of vegetable not covering real cost of productions are constraint that must be raised. And this list of constraints partly insists uh, on nowadays well-known problematic. But we have probably less highlight the importance of more interaction between production systems. So a small ga market gardening farm in rotation within a larger field crop farm might be very interesting in this context. To exchange machinery that small market gardener do not have access to, from an ecological point of view to increase the diversity of crops. Um, this would also be interesting to increase, increase knowledge exchange between new entrants in, agri in <coughs> agroecology and more traditional farmers which have different type of knowledge. <coughs> and my results also highlight um, the ineffectiveness of a non-political vision of transition and so the need of rekinder with a political vision of transition throughout agroecology. So eventually, I found that the pragmatic, comparative, and systemic epistemology that I tried to pursue is actually favoring peer-to-peer -peer knowledge exchanges. So I had the occasion to discuss my results with producers, to publish also my results in outreaching journals of producers, and in addition, I continue to be in contact with them and get feedback on how things are evolving. And I've been discovering that my results are now allowing producers to a bit more understand each other and less just certain practices such as per sale resale operation, which were usually very badly judged. 
producer better consider the other as people who face the same problem that they face, who even may share the same ideal than they have, but that in the current context did not did another compromise than themselves. And so uh, in the cooperative where Thomas Pongo studied that producer were avoiding ethical issue uh, when exchanging together, they are actually now starting to exchange on ethical issue, especially uh, on how to fix a just price. And so that's probably the best achieving of my pitch today. <laughs> <laughs> and so also I found that the presentation of economic data and of proposition of a uh, frame of socioeconomic reference in a context where producers were sometimes ashamed actually to show their personal accounting because they thought that agroecology would of course let them to have a very good income as it was claimed by many people um, and that they, that was not the reality they knew. Uh, so to produce this economic data showing some lack helped them now to bring back the discussion and to say, okay, no, we actually have all the same problem, now what we do. Um, this might be more particular to the Wallon region yet because there were almost no data available on the subject at that time. So anyway, this opens perspective for understanding the role of researcher and facilitator to accompany knowledge exchange. So to, as a last slide, to end this presentation, I would like to open new research questions and take this opportunity to let you know some further project and give me your feedback, the advice that you may have, and so on. So first, I did my empirical studies uh, in Belgium, and I've now started a collaboration f with the um, Institute for Humanity and Nature in Kyoto to start kind of same study, but in Japan. And Hopefully, if a PhD is getting her grant, I will also start a collaboration in the US context with the idea of to scale up the result to compare very different com North context um, to see how far the situation is the same and if you can find also better compromise than other or whatever. Um, but I would love to continue that later in the South context and so um, very open to discuss on that. Second, I briefly developed how I evaluated the implementation of the socioeconomic principle of agroecology through the study of the justification of producers, uh, especially in dilemma situation. And by considering this socioeconomic agroecological principle as a social justice horizon. So this approach helped me to reconnect the idea of agroecology with the practices of agroecology and the identification of agroecological systems by avoiding to reduce agroecology to a few sets of practices as it is unfortunately very often done. So I would love to continue this discussion to evaluate also the pursuit of uh, the ecological principles of agroecology and um, still thinking about how to do that. Uh, I don't know how far some context, some uh, like uh, environmental justice proposition could help to do that, for instance. Um, I haven't <coughs> delved into this question, but uh, I would love to. Thirdly, as I briefly mentioned as well, this justification of practices framework has been developed based on one model of justice drawn from uh, Boltanski and Thévenot French pra pragmatic sociology and developed by um, Mathieu de Nanteuil, but the relevance of other models of justice to identify the pursuit of the agroecological principles could be evaluated as well. Um, like to refer to Habermas, to Amartya Sen, to Axel Honneth, or and like Mathieu de Nantes published a book on that, structuring different models to evaluate how a decision based on social justice at work. So that could be interesting to continue to delve into. And fourth and finally, I'm planning to start a participatory uh, research to better understand how the production of shared frame <coughs> of reference on agroecology and the revelation of ethical dilemma um, regarding the implementation of agroecological principles can facilitate peer-to-peer -peer knowledge exchanges and can help set compromises ethically acceptable. And so I would love to develop a participative research on that next year, um, still looking for uh, trying to find funding and so on. So it's just uh, a beginning. And so thank you very much for being here and I hope I didn't kill you for this 40 minutes. <laughs> thank you.